So you went to the store. You bought a really expensive piece of meat, a beef tenderloin. And now you're sitting there that night before wondering, I don't want to mess this up. Well, folks, you're in luck because we're going to walk you through the whole process, give you the correct temperatures of when to pull it, when to put it on the smoker, when to wrap it. You're going to be the star of the day you are because this is the tenderest beef tenderloin you're ever going to have. The majestic piece of beef, what? The tenderloin, the filet mignon, the bestest beef you can put on the table. But folks, so many people when they see this, this is like $121 to $140 piece of meat. And they be looking in here and thinking, I'm not gonna buy that because I might mess it up when I cook it. Really, these are the easiest things to cook in the world. I'm gonna walk you through it. Sort of two different rubs on here to give you an idea. You can fix it any way you want, but the best way to me is what? You put it on the grill and then put it on the smoker. We're gonna get so much flavor out of it. Major, come here. Come here, I need, a, I need, a, I need somebody to be the uh, demonstration model here, okay? All right, no, you're a piece of beef right now, okay? So, no, you're not gonna get the piece of beef. All right, now we got this carcass hanging on the rail up here, okay? And underneath this backbone right here, tucked up under there, a muscle that hardly ever even sees use. I mean, it is just sitting there getting more tender and more tender every day. Right up again that backbone from the back of this hip bone, running back up here is the beef tenderloin. Major, the viewers would like to thank you for being a beef demonstration again today. Mm -hmm. You're so good, you are. Why am I buying the whole tenderloin? Cause it's saving my pocket book, it is. It is cheaper for me to buy the whole thing and cut it if I wanna cut steaks out of it but these things have been cleaned up pretty well. There's not any silver skin left on them. But I want to show you when you unfold this, this tail here is sticking out here. Ain't it big? He says, I cannot see it, Dad, but I want to. So a lot of folks are going to come in here and they're going to trim this off right here. That way they're going to end up with a uniform piece of meat. Not me. No. I'm going to... I mean, you want to save all of it you can, Yes, right? because there is so much goodness in all of it. There is. So we're going to tuck that tail under there. Same way with this one. And then... So you don't have to do any like cleaning or... No, the, these have been trimmed for me when I picked them up. So we're in pretty good shape. And I don't... If you see a little fat, you think that you need to get off there. Good, good no. catch, big. You can go ahead and trim it. But if there's any of the silver skin that's left on there, and you'll be sure that you see that because it's that silver membrane. Folks, that stuff has to come off because it will not melt. It's not going to cook down. It's just going to sit there and get tougher and tougher. So if you've got some of that silver membrane on there, just keep it pulled up a little, keep it tight and cut, and you can peel it off. We got what? We have some string. That's what they call it. Some no string? Yeah, and you can see oh. the string is wet. Why would we be soaking string? Oh. Huh? So because, it doesn't burn up? Yes. So it doesn't burn up on the fire when we throw it in there. So I have roped a lot of stuff in my life, but most of the time when I was roping it, it was still on the hoof. So we're gonna take this first one, come right in here, and you just take your knot, pull him down tight one more time. Now you can go back and think, well, I'm gonna cut this, and then I'm gonna tie it again, then I'm gonna cut it. Then, But now why would we do all that when we can just take it and put a half hitch on it every time. We're saving us time and effort really in the long run and we ain't having to cut no string but one time. Well, beef is all tied up, fire is ready to go, so we need to get the seasoning, but folks, one other thing that is vitally important in this process is you should have took this out 45 minutes before you ever started the fire because that way we're going to get an even cook time. Whichever one you pick don't make me no difference, but we're going to go ahead and mix up the one that I think is, we'll call the wet one. And that is a little bit of Duke's mayo, it is, and a little bit of mustard, and you can use honey Dijon. No, you cannot use honey Dijon. I don't want sweetness on this. You can use like a spicy mustard if you would like. Some thyme, yes. And what do we have here? Can you see this? Rosemary, dried, yes. Some W sauce, 
Oh my gosh, we are about out of W sauce, Shin. Worcestershire, Worcestershire. W sauce, where's your sister sauce? What kind of sauce? <laughs> you could do it. Worcestershire sauce. I got close. Coarse ground black pepper. A little bit of kosher salt. And to that, we gotta have something that's gonna thin that down a little to where it will help. Avocado oil. There is gonna be a tremendous amount of aroma coming out of this bowl. Mm. Smell that. It's like sunshine and rainbows. Yes, it is. Sunshine and rainbows. So, we can take this first one. You can just pour it on in there or get you a brush, whatever you would like. But just make sure that everybody gets coated really well. Is the wet mixer going to do something different? Yes, it's going to have to help the seasoning bond to it a little better because we're going to re-season this again here in just a minute. This is just sort of a base to get us started. To that, some original seasoning. Give it a good coating everywhere. The wind is not in my favor today. You're seasoning a lot of the checkbox lid. Yes, we are. Roll it just a little. We'll put some right there on the bottom to where we can get this. Number one is ready to go. Number two, he is nearly ready. We're gonna go original and coarse ground black pepper. And we're gonna season this really heavy. Now, to me, I'm really thinking that this one with a wet base is gonna have the better crust, but that will be until we find out later. So, turn him over. A little black pepper. Give him a good patting in there because we want it to stick a hole. We're going to make sure that all of them get some of it again. Well, hot it is. We have got Fogo hardwood lump charcoal started out right there in the bottom and then I just piled me some mesquite and some big old pieces of dried oak in there because I want a hot fire when it gets up here because we're searing it over here. Then we're gonna finish it in the Roughneck Smoker. Now, make sure it is oiled and it is clean. You can use whatever you want on there as long as it ain't WD-40. And we're just gonna go ahead and lay the first one on there. Hear that sound? That's called a sizzle. I really like that sound. Next comes this fella right here. Ooh. That is such a pretty thing. It is two pieces of beef right there on an open fire and you can see them flames be licking up in there trying to think that mm, I'm gonna catch up with you and I'm gonna sear you over oh so good. Well, probably been on about five minutes and it's pretty hot on one end, not so much here. Wood got a little dampish last night it did. So let's just roll over here and see what's happening. You can see we are getting some color. Uh, I'm gonna change ends with it. That end's a little hotter down there. So let's check this little fella out right here. We'll do the same with him. We gotta get that good sear on there to give us that good crust to start out with. But we gotta brown every side up just a little. Now, if you're gonna do this like we are and you need to finish it off on that smoker, you need to go ahead and get your Smoker already going, get it to a temp of about 240, 250. Today over there we're using Fogo, but then we are gonna put some mesquite chips with it to give us that good smoky flavor. We have got that good sear and a little char that I was wanting, so we're going directly right over here to the smoker. Let me get his brother that's coming with him. Look at that great color that we got. That's what we're after right there. I wanna see all that, just a little bit of char, but that color that just sears that meat, all that flavor just locks in. So, now folks, you have seen me use this before. Our Roughneck Smoker, we paired up with Hasty Bake to get this thing designed, we did. And it has 
airtight closures that will latch that thing down tight where you can control that temperature oh so easy. Doesn't take a lot of smoke to put in there because a little bit goes a long way, it's saving you money and saving you fuel both. But I have had a fire in these hold a constant temperature for about 14, 15 hours. So best thing to cook with, there'll be a link down there below to where you can check it out. But we need to add some mesquite wood chips to it, we do. So let me get that open. Ooh, that is hot, big. This is all kiln dried wood. It is great smoking wood. So I just like to throw me some of them chips in there. Temperature is key here. So we're gonna to try to get this to about between 220, 250, right along in there. And it's not got a knob. We control this with these vents here. You can shut them down, open them up. Two in the front, one in the back to keep that smoke rolling. We're gonna cook this, whew, I'd say anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, but we're gonna check it with our chef's temp because we're gonna to get to a temperature of 120 and then we're gonna pull it. Make sure you got a good meat thermometer. Make sure you watch that thermometer on that smoker. Pulled it off, got her on the cutting board. We pulled it at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Brought it over here, wrapped it with aluminum foil or what you would call tint it. We're gonna let that temperature come up to 125 degrees. Probably gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes maybe on that because we're increasing that temperature. You get it to where you want it. Now, if you wanna cook it a little longer, like cook it to 125, I'm gonna cut that piece and it cuts like butter. So I'm gonna cut another piece. And then I'm which, just, which one is that one? This is the mayonnaise mustard base. Okay. Mm. So tender. I'm really thinking that mustard gives it just a little tang that you need, but I get the rosemary and the thyme in there. Hang on, y'all's time is coming. Look at, I mean, my gosh. So we'll go back to the original and just pepper. Mm. You can see that black pepper on there. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'd either you want to. Okay, but honestly, like, do you have a favorite or tell me like, what do you notice are the biggest differences in flavor? Well, I think really in a way, maybe so, the mustard and mayonnaise over here, as you watch that cut, was maybe just a little more tender than this over here because I think it sealed in that moisture just a little there. So do you get a big flavor difference or is it more just the moisture? No, there's a flavor difference, sir. You get the, the tang of the mustard, which is really what I wanted. Both of them are good. How many of you people have puppies out there that get filet? Well, these I'm, these puppies here are privileged, but they have- They have been through a rigorous training yeah, program yes. to be taste testers. So I think they should be rewarded. So Big, you've been with us the longest, probably 14 years. There you go, buddy. Duker. You and Cletus stayed out all night long last night and partied. I'm missing two. There's, oh, here they are. Whoo, makes me want to dance. How about the pup dance? Whoop. 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 That's what beef will do to you. It'll make you feel good. Mm -hmm. Now we know this is a little expensive and this might be for just special occasions, but folks, this is foolproof. We give you the temperatures and walk you through every step. This is something you can do to create a very special dinner at your house for someone you love, or just invite me and Shannon the pups over. We'll come over because you make this a special meal. But really folks, y'all make it very special just watching our videos. We are so proud of you, we are. Hey, guess what? We done added another event to the book tour. Where are we going? 
to the Hatch Valley out there in New Mexico, the Green Chili Festival, Labor Day weekend. We're going to be out there paired up with the Fresh Chili Company. We're going to be cooking some samples. We have some new stuff that's coming out. Oh my gosh, I'll sign you a book. We can do the Hot Chili Fiesta Dance. Oh my gosh, it'll be so good. It will. Mm. Man. But it is with great pride, honor, and privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying over camp. We commend you all, we do. For the rest of you, come on in here. Come on, I'm gonna give you a big old hug. God bless you, each and every one, and I'll see you down the best grilled tenderloin trail ever. Have a little, look right there, what we have. We have beef today, yes, beef. One for you and one for Cletus, right? Oh my gosh. You know when you have humidity <laughs> and you can't get these to go on? It's sort of like when you're sweating really bad and you want to pull a t-shirt off. You can do it. Oh my gosh. We're gonna go with that regardless, okay?